So we finally come to the live-action Little Mermaid, Disney's latest live-action remake. It ends up being pretty much what we were expecting, a mostly word-for-word -word copy of the original, with some changes that ended up being pretty baffling. I'm going to be making a video specifically on those changes, and why, in my opinion, they didn't work the way Disney wanted them to, but I am grateful that the novelization came out before the movie did, because it was pretty much spot-on, and I'm glad that I had a warning before I went in to see the film, otherwise I would've been even more disappointed. So I thought for this one I would just give my overall thoughts on the film. First, there's the visuals. It ended up looking better on screen than it did in the trailers. It was definitely a lot better than Peter Pan Wendy, which was so poorly lit you could barely make out what was going on on screen, at least during the night shots. And even in direct sunlight, it still looked washed out. Luckily, this movie didn't have as bad a problem with that, although I still don't think it looked very good, admittedly. The CGI looked pretty phony, and it dipped into the uncanny valley too much for my taste. All the merfolk are also wiggling their arms probably more than they need to. Them superimposing the actors onto 3D models doesn't look as bad as cats, but it still falls into that uncanny valley, which is unfortunate. The movements just didn't feel natural. The sea creatures are also very uncanny, which made Under the Sea a lot less charming for me. Sebastian was already creepy enough, but then they have a part where Ariel is riding on a sea turtle who's walking along the ocean floor, and it just didn't do it for me. And that's on top of all the faceless CGI sea creatures dancing around. Although Ariel herself seemed into it, which is a little weird when you think about it, since she's supposed to not agree with Sebastian. So when she disappears at the end, it feels more random. She was just singing along and now she's gone all of a sudden. But back to the use of CGI, Ursula was also pretty unsettling, and not in that classic villain kind of way. Her tentacles felt kind of unnatural, and then they also can move independently of Ursula. There's one scene where she's throwing a temper tantrum of sorts, so the tentacles move on their own to try to find what she's looking for, and it was pretty unsettling. I guess that's what they were going for, but I did not care for it. Atlantica was really underwhelming in this version. In the animated film, it was a sparkling undersea city, but this time it was just giant rock towers, and it's nowhere near as majestic as it was originally. It reminds me of Neverland in the new Peter Pan and Wendy, where it's just an island that looks like a boring rock. I know they want to be realistic, but these are fantasies that include things like mermaids and fairies. Have some fun with it. I'm also disappointed with Ariel's costumes for when she's on land. She only gets two dresses in the whole movie, and they're both pretty much the same ruffle dress but with different colors. And while the dresses themselves are nice, they're pretty understated when compared to the rest of the Disney princess lineup, and they never give her a princess dress, which is a shame. Ariel has some pretty iconic styles, and it would have been great to see them again in live action. The other remakes got poofy princess dresses. Admittedly, Belle's was awful, but at least they remembered to have it. They cut the dinner scene, and while I do like the scene they replaced it with, I don't think it needed to replace it outright. They could have had a scene where she has dinner with Eric and the Queen, with her in her big poofy princess dress, and a scene of Eric showing her maps. Even Vanessa has a more princess-like dress than her. They actually cut a lot of scenes and lines from the original, which is kind of weird since it's an hour longer than the original, which causes the movie to drag in my opinion. But one of the scenes they cut was the concert at the beginning, where they introduced Triton's daughters. The scene they replace it with isn't exactly interesting. They replace it with something called the Coral Moon Festival, where the daughters of Triton just sit around in a circle, and then Triton addresses them all by name. Except they all know each other, so it's very obvious that he's doing this just for the sake of the audience. They also never explain the significance of the Coral Moon, so it feels more like they're just gathering for a family meeting rather than a celebration. And as far as world building goes, it would've been nice if they had given us more information. If they were going to replace a musical number, it would've been nice if they replaced it with something a little more engaging. The film has a lot less energy than the original animated version does. I guess it's supposed to be more grounded, but then for scenes where it does get really intense, it feels like there's a disconnect. For example, I thought Javier Bardem's performance was way too subtle. King Triton has a lot of presence, but Bardem felt like he was kind of sleepwalking through his scenes. So the scene where he discovers Ariel's grotto just feels like he's chastising her rather than really angry. And when he starts blasting, it doesn't feel like it escalated to that point, and it came out of nowhere. I felt like Melissa McCarthy was doing more of an impersonation. I did think her performance was one of the more animated ones, but honestly, the most memorable thing about her, in my opinion, was the fact that her tentacles can move on their own. And then there's, of course, the overly realistic animal sidekicks, which were a little uncomfortable, admittedly. I thought their voiceovers were fine, but you also have to know that it's, you know, Aquafina and a small child's voice coming out of a realistic fish. So in other words, it met my expectations. I think Halle Bailey was the best actor in the film, although her performance was still pretty understated. She's not as expressive as Sherry Stoner, who did the live-action reference for Ariel, but Stoner had a background in improv, while Bailey is a singer, so I'm not really surprised 
surprise there. Plus, she matches the energy of the rest of the film, and she'd probably be overacting if she was as expressive as Stoner was. They kept Alan Menken on for the music, who was the original composer for the animated movie, although I do think the re-recordings aren't as fun or interesting as the original. The 2D animation just has more fun visuals. I already talked about Under the Sea, with their creepy slow turtles and the creepy creatures that are floating around. They also added on some new songs, and despite Alan Menken's presence, they sound like they were added later, instead of being a natural part of The Little Mermaid. Like how He Lives in You wasn't actually from the original Lion King, but it was so good that they added it to the stage show. Admittedly, it's not as good as Circle of Life, but it fits the themes and messages of Lion King so well, so it feels like a natural addition. The new songs they added are pretty good for the most part, I just didn't think the new songs matched. And then there's the Scuttlebutt, which was just completely unnecessary. It's like they just thought it'd be funny because the character's name is Scuttle, and there just happens to be a synonym for gossip called Scuttlebutt. Have you not heard that Scuttlebutt? Your butt. No! Hilarious. Anyway, I appreciate that Halle Bailey is actually a singer, so we didn't have to be subjected to autotune like we did with Emma Watson. This was my first time actually hearing her performance. There were some parts of the song where they had her get really breathy. I think they want her to sound desperate and yearning for the outside world, but I didn't really vibe with it. But other than that, she did a good job. Disney's been making these live action remakes because they believe they're easy money by attracting both nostalgic adults and children. But I do think they're running into live action remake fatigue. This is like the 17th remake they've done and they've already announced at least 10 more, including for movies that aren't even a decade old. It's pretty exhausting and they're always disparaging the original works, which is weird to make fun of people's nostalgia when you're trying to bank off of their nostalgia. Not to mention all the drama around the casting, with The Little Mermaid only being the tip of the Iceberg. There was drama surrounding the casting of Nani from Lilo and Stitch, and the original voice actress for Moana is not going to be reprising her role for the live action movie. Both cases due to the concern with representation, since the actresses don't have the same skin tone portrayed in the animations. Although The Rock is still playing Maui, and in my opinion, they don't look that much alike either. Just saying. But more importantly, people would rather see a sequel or a series instead of a remake. There's just a lot of drama around these movies, and I think people are taking notice. I don't think these movies are a guaranteed success like they once were. The Little Mermaid did decently domestically, however it failed to capture audiences worldwide, and now it has to compete with other movies like Into the Spider-Verse, so the likelihood of it reaching a billion dollars isn't great, which I'm sure is a big blow to Disney. They could be working on new and exciting projects, but I think right now all they have in the works is Wish in that regard, but I do think that Disney is their strongest when they're adapting fairy tales, and hopefully we can get some new and exciting ones. They have a whole world of lore they can pull from, instead of relying so heavily on what they see as easy cash grabs. Overall, I don't think Disney banking on these remakes is really going to work out for them in the long run. As for The Little Mermaid, it ended up being everything I was expecting it to be, which is not the most positive statement. So keep a lookout for my deep dive into the characterization and plot changes, as I have a lot to say on that subject. But these were my general thoughts on The Little Mermaid and live action remakes as a whole. Let me know what you guys think down below, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching everyone, I really appreciate Appreciate it. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to our members Stutania, Tyrant Carnivore, Adam K, Shiny Orc Boy, The Rabbit Mancer, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Bill C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Bandito Bane, Dakari the Professor, Equestron, Norman Sweet Cream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Garcia XV Legend, Hunter Rose, Dash Hound, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Butcher 7 Actual, Felix Bam, Soundboy 00, Owen Wildish, Player Zero, Kitsune Fiora, Lucas Geist, Data Dine Executive, Jay Draws, Ninja Rex, Lil and Blue Spirit. Thank you all so much for your support. If you want to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. You can also support the channel by leaving a like on this video and subscribing. It helps us out a lot and it's free. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support us that way, and a link to that will be in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone!